Hey, Christy here from Little Crafty Fiber Arts. Today I want to do a little short video with you on different spindles, which is best to start out spinning with, and the weight that's best to start out spinning with, and talk to you a little bit about the anatomy of a spindle if you've never spindle, spun yarn, and um, what to look for when you're buying a spindle. And if you want to visit my group that uh, myself and Tom Swindler started recently on spindle spinning. I will leave the link in the description box below so you can join. And I just want to mention that if at any time during these, these videos that you have trouble understanding something or you would like for me to do a little more extensive video on a certain part, let me know and I will post it in the group. Okay? So, to get started, we're going to be talking about the top whirl first. A top, top whirl and bottom whirl has three parts. They have the shaft, the whirl, and the hook. Some have a cup hook or something similar to a cup hook, some don't. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And then I'm, after we finish talking about the bottom whirl and the top whirl, we are going to talk about other spindles that come from other regions of the world um, and a little bit about those but not in too much depth because we'll go into depth on them later. So when you're buying a top whirl spindle to learn to spin, this is a standard 12 inch and that's a good length to start with. It needs to be fairly heavy. The consensus is to start out with a two to three ounce spindle. Personally, I think a three ounce spindle is just a little too heavy because as you turn your spindle and you're dropping it um, to spin and you're building your cop up, of your yarn here and you'll learn my what a cop is in my next video um, it's going to get heavy and it's going to be a little harder for your wrist and tiring i think so my suggestion is to start out with a one and a half to a two and a half ounce spindle if you want to go three go for it that's up to you but that's my suggestion okay so either a two to three ounce anywhere in between there or anywhere in between a 1.5 and a 2.5 okay now, most spindles, top whirls, not all, but most of them, have a notch. And that notch is usually lined up with the back side of the hook, which works really well when you're wrapping your yarn on. And I suggest when you wrap your yarn on that you wrap it twice so that it's not falling out. It helps kind of lock it in there while you're spinning. Um, but this notch is pretty important for a beginner in my opinion so your yarn will be sliding because it'll start sliding around your whirl and so if you was to buy one and it doesn't have that notch you can easily put one in it with a knife or something um, I have some that I put some in I'll show you uh, later and it, it it just really helps you as far as spinning um, keep your yarn in place and not get so frustrated. Now just remember, the heavier the spindle, the thicker the yarn you'll be able to spin. The lighter the spindle, the thinner yarn you'll be able to spin. And the heavier spindle is going to drop down. If you have one that's 12 inches, you know, it's going to meet the floor quicker or however far you um, spin, but that's fine because this is, a, this is a good size and this one's not too heavy. I don't remember what this one weighs, but it's not that heavy. It's, it's a good size and a good weight. So something like this would be good. And, it, and I can leave some links in the description box below of where you can get some like this, like beginner spindles on Etsy. Um, I can leave some in the group if you want to join the group. Um, I'd rather not like overwhelm my description box, but if you want to join the group, that would be great. We'd be glad to have you. Okay, so now we're going to go to a bottom whirl. The bottom whirl is just as it suggests. The whirl's on the bottom, opposite of the top whirl. And that means all the weight's on the bottom, so as you're spinning, your weight is down here. Now, a lot of people say they don't like to start out with a bottom whirl because they say they wobble a lot when you spin. I've never had that problem, drop spinning with a bottom whirl, but some people evidently do. And if you're afraid of that, you might be better off to get a top whirl. But you can start out as a beginner with a top whirl, but I would suggest the same. A one and a half to two and a half ounce or two to three is the consensus. 
So, and a, and a really great thing about a bottom world too, if you decide later you want to learn how to spend supported, then instead of buying a supported spindle to see if you like it, you can spend supported with your bottom whorl. So you get your little dish and just spin like this and spin supported. So that's that's a that's like a little bonus of having a bottom whorl. But it's up to you and usually there's not one that's better than the other one. It just depends usually on the person. But most people do start out with a top whorl. Now we do have variations of bottom and top whorls. Um, there are different sizes. I'm looking for the size, my smaller ones, my top whorls. Here they are. This is a 6 inch top whorl and you can see that it's a lot smaller than my 12 inch. Okay. And it does have a cup hook, and it didn't have a notch, so I made one. Here's where I show you I made one. And then this is a little baby top whorl. And this one spins really thin yarn. It's good for, like, cotton, silk, and um, something you want to spin thin. And it's got a cup hook shape, but if I remember correctly, he made this out of piano wire. And the uh, shaft is mahogany. And the whorl is made from juniper wood. And I like to use it to spin something really, really thin. And this, these make good travel spindles, too, because they're small. But you sure wouldn't want to start out with something like this as a beginner because you would get really frustrated really quick. And then we have what they call a pocket bottom whorl. This one is a bamboo shaft and a purple heart wood. And it's, it's pretty heavy for a spindle this size but I use it supported and it spins pretty doggone fast as you can see I usually spin it in a wood bowl I just brought this one in here because it's smaller um, but I like this little spindle it's really good for spinning as you can see the yarn is pretty thin so um, and, and it can be spun supported like I was just doing because it has a pointed tip or you can spin it drop. And it doesn't have a cup hook. It has a notch so you can do a half hitch. And we'll talk about half hitches later um, in some videos. Now, let's move on to some spindles from around the world. Um, this is, this one and this one are... Tibetans and you might say to yourself well they look like bottom whorls well basically they are but they're support spindles they're not drop spindles and this one has a very very thin tip and I mean it flies and it has a ball bearing end it's not a natural wood end so it really flies I mean it will just I have spun with it before, and it would have lifted up off the dish. <laughs> so it's it's a mover and a shaker. <laughs> um, and this, I can't remember what the shaft is made of, but I know the whorl is walnut. And when you have a thinner end like that, you're going to get more revolutions, cause, so it's going to go faster. You're going to get more, you know, twist in there. Um, and then this is a Tibetan, and it's... Uh, got a whorl that's solid it's not this would be kind of considered what they call rim weighted where it's a little bit shallow in here and then there's more weight on the outside and that makes it spin faster too um, and usually tibetans this one the whorl's a little bit high but usually tibetans the whorl or whorls are down closer to the tip this one has a ball bearing tip on it too this one spins good too but it's just a little bit slower than this one but you can see it spins really well. Tibetans are fast. And if you want, ever want to learn to spin on uh, a supported spindle, a Tibetan is one of the best ones to start out with if you want to spin supported or a bottom whorl spin supported, in my opinion. Um, this one is what they call eucalyptus wood. And the guy that made it lives in Florida. And he has a eucalyptus wood tree in his yard. But I think if I remember correctly, a eucalyptus wood, they're, if you've ever seen their wood, it's all kinds of different colors. It's gorgeous. But it doesn't have those colors until a certain time of growth, I think. 
and his didn't have it. It's just solid, but it is eucalyptus wood, but he stained it to look like eucalyptus wood. And really, eucalyptus wood would look like this if it was the colors it's, you know, it is. And I can't remember. I think this is bird's eye maple, the um, shaft. And then, like I said, it has the ball bearing. I think this is a copper ball bearing on the end. Okay. Now we have my favorite, the Russians of the supported spindles. My favorite of the supported spindles. I love a Russian spindle. I have another one, too, I didn't bring in here, and I had it made specially. Um, my husband gave it to me for our anniversary. It's got leaves painted on it. I'll have to show it to you one day. So this is a, this is fashioned after a Russian. A Russian usually has the weight at the very bottom. And this one is not like a true Russian, but it's fashioned after a Russian. And I think the shaft of this one is maple, and this is yellow heart, the big part down here. And it's, it's got some weight to it. And it's also got a ball bearing tip. And it's got a little gem in the top. This is a Merkwood. Um, and it spins really good. It's a really good spinner. It's very nice. I think it was the first supportive spindle I bought. And this is fashioned after a true Russian uh, in the Ukraine. I think it's the Ukrainian region or the in the Russian Russia area. Uh, over there toward Russia, Ukrainian area. And the lady that sells these, if I'm telling you wrong, I will correct myself later. The lady that sells these, I think her uncle still lives there. And her family grew up. She grew up with her family, her mother, her grandparents, stuff. They spun. And they used Russians that looked exactly like this, originals. So he does reproductions. And this is one of his reproductions. And I was tickled to get this because I really wanted a original um, Russian. And these are the type spindles that you spend the um, really thin Shetland lace that the um, shawls that you can make knit from them will fall through a ring. The whole shawl will fall through a ring. The, I think they call them a ring shawl. So that is a that is Russian type spindles, a, a reproduction, and then Russian-like, I guess I'll say. Then we have a Tockley. A Tockley is a spindle that is used, it's from India, um, and this is a reproduction, of course. It's not, uh, it's fashioned after a Tockley, but it's, you know, fancied up. It's got the the um, looks like wrought iron kind of looking whirl and then he's put beads on it and he's put um, powder coated the uh, shaft but they're very thin they're very fast they're all metal except for the glass bead and they are used to spin um, cotton any kind of short fiber like cotton and it spins really fast as you can see And that's so it can put the twist in there really fast because cotton takes a high amount of twist. And you can see what I spun on here is very thin. That's actually um, some silk that I was spinning. So that is what a Tockley looks like. And, I, and all Tockleys that I've ever seen are metal. And that's... Um, a nice little, nice little spindle to have. Now, I have a medieval spindle. And Hershey Fiber Arts makes these. And I'm going to do a, a listing in the group um, that tells you a lot of the spindle makers in the industry today that make them by hand. And there's some in different countries. I'm going to try to list those too in the United States. I know some that, you know make them in different countries too. Now normally the world doesn't come with a medieval. I made this out of paper and put it on here and it wobbles a little bit because my paper it makes it uneven but it still spins really really good. If I had a whirl on it that was um, more balanced it wouldn't wobble like that. But a medieval spindle is a Viking spindle from the Viking era 
and it has a belly on it. And if you see, look at it, this is like, this is a swirl. I mean, really kind of the middle of it. And then you can put a whirl on it to um, give it more weight when you start out spinning. And then as you build your cop up, you can take your weight off or change your weight of whirl. Um, so you can put more, even more yarn on it until you need to just take the whirl off and then you can spin because your yarn is built up in the middle and put the weight on it so you can spin it without a whirl at all. So that's the beauty. I really like this one and Hershey Fiber Arts sells these really cheap and she sells them I think in hickory, walnut, and oak maybe. I think this one may be hickory. I have a walnut one that's longer. She sells them, I think they're all the same size now. She used to sell them different sizes. And she sells one for flax, too, to spin flax. But um, I really like these little spindles. And they're really neat. You can get glass squirrels to put on them, too, or any kind. I've even put some beads I've had on mine. Um, they're just really nice to have. they got a good weight to them once you put a whirl on them. And she will put a notch in it if you want to spin it um, drop. Or she'll put a spiral in it, and we'll talk about that later too. And uh, or she'll leave it just like it is, and that's the way I like it because I like to spin them supported instead of drop. So that's a medieval Viking spindle. Okay, now I'm going to talk about my favorite of all drop spindles is the Turkish, and these are small Turkish. I don't have a big Turkish. I traded my Turkish, my large one. Um, I used it mostly for plying anyway, so now I've got my um, big top whirl and my big um, bottom whirl that I ply with. And this is um, the neatest little spindle, in my opinion. Um, you can spin supported or drop with them. They have a shaft, and it has a little finial up here to do a half hitch and removable arms. So easy, compact, to put in a little baggie with some wool and to carry with you if you're going out or, you know, whatever. And when you put them together, you just stick the arms back together, match up your holes, stick your shaft through, and I will show you when we get to the Turkish how to um, start your leader. And you'll learn more about that when I do the video tomorrow on Top World, what a leader is. And um, they're just so neat because once you get your cop built up and it won't hold anymore, you take your cop off and you can ply from that cop, from the inside and the outside. And you're not using like two balls or two, you know. Um, that's the really neat thing about a Turkish. Now this one's made of plastic. It's a type of plastic. It's made by the company called Turtle Made, and they have their name on the bottom. And they're really good little spindles. I have three of them. This is the largest one I have, and I have two small ones. I have one that's just teeny tiny, teeny little thing. It's the smallest one that I've ever seen made, but I use it sometimes to spin silk. Now here is a um, wooden one, and this is made by Scott Mountain, Scott Mountain something. I have got three from him. This is a walnut one, and it has a little finial. Most all the Turkish have finials. They don't have hooks because the hook would get in the way. And, um, you know, where you do the half hitch. And you can see I've got some built up on this one. I built this one high, and you can learn to build them high, or you can learn to build them wide, and I can show you both ways. But, um, I love these to sit and spend when I'm watching TV or just, you know, whatever. If I'm bored or something and just want to do something mundane, this, this works. Or I need a break from knitting or something, I'll just, you know, pick up my Turkish and do a little bit of spending. Spindling, excuse me. This is a Cordell. I mean, Cordell. This is a um, coarser yarn, uh, wool. I can't talk. I can't remember what this is actually, but it's coarser and it's not as much fun to spin because it's just a little too coarse for me, but I'll use it for something. It's carded too, so, um, and we'll talk the difference between carded wool and comb wool 
We'll be doing that. I'll be showing you how you can buy you some tools to card and comb. They don't cost a lot of money because I know carders and um, professional combs are not cheap. Now, you can also, if you're on a budget and you don't want to buy a spindle, you can make a spindle. And I've made two here. I'm in the middle of making another one. And this is a really long one. This one's 13 inches long. I still may cut this one off a little bit. It's just a little bit too long for me. But I used a needle, a knitting needle. And I think this is a 5.5 millimeter. And this is a paper whorl. And I used a little piece of a part of a um, necklace I had and shorted it up. And then I put a plastic straw in here to steady the um, shaft. And it wobbles a little bit because I think it's just a little bit too long. But it does spin pretty good for me. So I use it. Um, this one is made from a, another needle. And this is a... 14-inch uh, needle I cut down and the whirl on this one is a um, felted piece of wool needle felted wool and you'll be surprised how well this thing spins you wouldn't think so but it does it spins very very good so I use it sometimes and I put a little jump ring in here to kind of keep it from shimmying around and short up so I use it quite a bit too as supported but now you can even do the same thing you can take um, CDs put them on a pencil um, you can put a CD on a knitting needle uh, you know use the CD as the whirl and the knitting needle as a shaft and fix you a hook and I've seen people put the hooks in the erasers down through the eraser or take the eraser out and put it down through there. There's just all kinds of ways. I, and if you want to learn to spin drop, there's a lot of people that are, are now teaching how to spin drop with a um, wooden stick from a tree and a potato or a rock. <laughs> and it works. So you don't have to go out and spend, you know, a lot of money on fancy spindles unless you want to, unless you really get into it and you want to, to try it. It's just, just remember that your weight needs to be one and a half to two and a half or two to three. Okay. So that's pretty much, and this is my little spinning bowl, my little glass bowl, but we'll talk about spinning bowls too later. Um, that's my little spill on spindles and uh, giving you a little background on some of mine that I have. Uh, I would love to collect at least one from all the different regions of the world, and maybe one day I will, but not not right now <laughs> so I'm working on it but maybe later anyway I hope you enjoyed this if you have any questions leave some comments in the description box below give me some likes uh, thumbs up um, share the video and if you wish and you want to learn more about spindle spinning I'm gonna be doing a series of videos um, between top whirl bottom whirl um, support um, drafting um, when we spend a little more time on drafting, um, I'm going to be doing a study on the different uh, spindles from different regions of the world. And um, I want to do a wool study at some point um, of different wools. So if you're interested in that, I will leave the link below and please come join us. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.